Well, hi, and thanks for joining me for another video. For those of you who don't know, my name is Peter Lamont. I am a New Jersey business and litigation attorney, and we're doing a, a mobile video. Haven't done one of these in a very long time. All right, so today we're going to talk about some of the myths associated with pro se representation. Let's start with the first one. But before we do, let me uh, take a step back. Let me just explain uh, again what pro se representation is. So if you've seen some of my other videos, you know that we've discussed this topic before. But just to keep it short and simple, pro se representation is when you represent yourself without an attorney in a legal matter. Uh, more often than not, it is a litigation matter. So one of the first myths is that anybody can represent themselves in court. Now, technically, that's true. You can, under our laws, represent yourself in court, unless you are a business. So businesses under New Jersey law are not permitted to represent themselves pro se. And this goes for corporations or LLCs. You must have an attorney represent you if you are a business or an LLC located in New Jersey, it doesn't make a difference whether you are the plaintiff or a defendant in the lawsuit, you need to have an attorney. So first myth dispelled, which is anybody, which includes LLCs or corporations, you can't represent yourself pro se. So, so you can't. If you are an individual, yeah, you do have that right to do it. Okay, the next one is that you can find all the information that you need to adequately represent yourself online or on the court's website. I mean, I understand that people believe that, and when you go to the court's website, there are a significant amount of resources. There's a guidebook that they have for representing yourself in a special civil court. Um, there's a guidebook, I believe, for representing yourself in law division cases. But just because there's a guidebook doesn't mean that you should attempt to represent yourself without an attorney. I could probably find a manual on how to perform an appendectomy, but if I were you, I wouldn't trust me to take out your appendix. So, you know, again, are there resources available? Yes. Is it really meant for you um, as a step-by-step -step guide as to how to litigate a case, I'm going to say it's not. It gives you basic information, and there are instances where somebody just absolutely, no matter what they do, can't afford a lawyer, and they need to represent themselves, pro se. And so the guidebooks are a good source of information in situations like that. But should you represent yourself if you don't have to? The answer is no. The next myth is that representing yourself will save you money. In some instances, maybe it does save you money. On small scale things, maybe some uh, municipal matters, things of that nature, small claims court, maybe it'll save you a little bit of money. Or if you're a plaintiff in a special civil case and your damages are only $2,500. Maybe it'll save you a little bit of money to represent yourself. But in anything over four or $5,000, it is a myth to believe that representing yourself is going to save you money. Representing yourself when you aren't really familiar with the court system, with the procedures, and with how to handle a, a, an adversarial attorney, you're going to spend more money because you're going to have to file something and then likely refile it and then refile it again. Um, you are going to be in situations where you could be barred from presenting certain evidence. It's going to cost you more money to try to find ways to fix that. So does it save you money? No, it really doesn't. I think that's a, a significant myth that people have that, uh, hey, you know, you want to save money, represent yourself. It doesn't work that way you're gonna end up losing out on money that you were entitled to if you're the plaintiff, and you're gonna end up probably being hit with a bigger judgment or jury award if you're the defendant from representing yourself. Next myth, the belief that because you are representing yourself pro se, 
the court is going to be lenient and give you more time or uh, have more understanding about your circumstances because you're pro se. And I can tell you from seeing it happen, yes, some judges do give a little bit of leeway, but a little bit of leeway is not what most people expect. The courts typically do not care that you're pro se. There are rules, they follow the rules. If, you know, and I, when I, I mentioned leeway, if it's a matter of, you know, you are um, slightly confused with how to file a motion, maybe they'll give you some leeway on something that you didn't include in your motion. But as far as dates go, if you blow a date, there's no leeway. They treat you just as if you were represented by an attorney. Uh, gone are the days where you know judges will look differently upon you because you're representing yourself. I mean, I haven't seen that you know really play out in in over a decade. I mean, most of the judges that are on the bench now, and I'm referring specifically to New Jersey. They're fair. They're fair across the board, but they're going to be fair to a pro se the same way they would be to a represented party. And what's good for the goose is good for the gander. So I think that, you know, if you believe that the court is going to be more lenient with you because you are representing yourself, then you truly have a fool for a client because it's not the way it works. And finally, the last myth that anybody can learn to represent themselves. That is just wrong. You know, lawyers go to school for years and it's not the schooling that teaches you how to be a lawyer because anybody can graduate from law school and have no idea how to be a lawyer. It is the years of practice in the field. And I've been practicing for over 20 years. They call it a practice because you're still growing, evolving, learning, developing, so being a lawyer is not something you, you go to law school, you get your degree and automatically you're a lawyer. It takes decades of experience to be a good lawyer. Does that mean that you can't learn how to handle your own matter? No, but it's going to take you a tremendous amount of time and depending upon the, the extent of your matter, the complexity of your matter, yeah, you might not be able to do it ever because you don't have that level of experience. So, you know, that said, I think to sum this up, there's a lot of myths that exist out there about representing yourself without a lawyer, and I just want to sort of, you know, lay to rest some of them so that you have a better understanding of, you know, what it means to represent yourself, pro se. All right, well, that's going to do it. Hopefully you learned something from this video, and make sure you subscribe, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment if you have any questions, and I'll see you next time.